Alright, alright, welcome back guys, you guessed it. Had to go deal with some personal matters, some deaths for some close friends of mine, etc, etc. So basically I didn't have time to make some stuff for a little bit. But that is beside the point. That is beside the point. So I'm going to go ahead and do my deck profile for my... My Odatic. And it, to me, it looks like it's just OG Datic. But, you know, everyone pronounces it differently. We're gonna, we're gonna get straight into it. And I run a straight, full, pure deck for it, too. So, mm, we'll go into it. We'll go into it. These reptiles are actually pretty good to use. They have a, they have a very good, very good engine. Pretty much, you just need to draw one particular spell card. Dump into your grave, then you do it right. You pull straight out through an OTK, especially if you do it on your first turn. If you do it on your first turn, your opponent doesn't benefit at all from it. And then you could potentially bounce all their shit into the graveyard, depending on how you want to do it. And, you know, how how much you utilize Overlord. Alright, so, we're gonna, we're gonna go over the monsters today. Monsters first, anyways. I'm laid out over here. Try to make it all nice and pretty, but, you know. That's how it is. That is how it is. Alright, alright. So, <clears throat> first things first, we'll start off with the only non Odiac monster that I use in this deck. And that is Light Serpent. Light Serpent is a fairly simple card. Fits into the graveyard of a discard. You can special summon it. It can't be used for sacred material, but that's fine. This deck doesn't use sacred material. This deck uses XYZ and then links. But, you know, it all comes down to that particularly. You know, your choice. I think it works fine for um, XYZs. Links is just a little extra fluff. I need to finish my extra deck. Usually, for every, um, deck that I do, I always keep a capped extra deck of 15, or a capped amount, obviously, because you never know, I, I use cards that in Yu-Gi-Oh, for example, they, um, they get effects and extra um, type of stuff based off of how much extra deck you have compared to your opponent. It's always good to have 15, even if you just start some spacers. But, I mean, this is a deck I'd play casually. I want to take it to locals, but it, it probably gets shit on, I don't know. I'll I'll test it here soon. Get some documentation, let you know how it goes because it really depends on locals and how sweaty people want to be, you know? Oh anyway, so Light Serpent's my first guy. I used to run three. I do not now, I only run the one because the rest of it, like Light Serpent's only mainly used for the discard for Snake Rain. You do that right? Use lights around the discard. It's a free, free monster in your field. We'll just say that. Pretty easy. You'll be able to utilize that later, though. So, light serpents out of the way. And next, we're going to go with my man Zuha, the o Odiac Boundless. I run two of this boy. This boy's really good. He's got a bunch of effects. If you sent from the field or a special summon from the graveyard, you can activate his effect. Your opponent draws a card, and if they do, if they do, you add Odiac Monster from your deck to hand, accept that. Then each player sends one card from their hand to the graveyard. If this card is in your graveyard, you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard and add it back to your hand. So basically, you can, um, this that this whole archetype, which is, by the way, it's, it's from Ancient Guardians, like the box. This, I know, I know, this, this video should have been done a lot sooner, like when everyone else did theirs. Whatever, I'm... Stuff comes up, you know. Anyways, but um, this whole archetype is based around dumping reptile monsters into the graveyard and then using your like playing off your graveyard, banishing stuff, pulling it back from banish, etc., etc. If you do it right, you can pretty much just break someone's board on the other end as long as you you have like something to take care of back row. If they're unfortunate enough to not lay down back row, then that is unfortunate, but in modern day Yu-Gi-Oh, like, who doesn't use back row? Who doesn't use 
back row protection. You'd be dumb if you don't. But anyways, he's really good for um, cycling stuff. Like, stuff that you draw in your hand, especially for this deck, and you want it in the like, graveyard. He's your man. Say if your opponent has a relatively small hand and you want to window, like whittle it down, try to get his effect up each turn. You need to cycle stuff from a hand to the grave. There you go. You need to cycle him back to your hand to redo it the following turn. There it is. It's really good. Now, there is another one of these guys. His name is Frito. Or Frodo. I call him Frito. I don't remember what he does, but... He didn't do anything as good as cycling graveyard and hand and hand and graveyard like this guy does, plus causing your opponent to discard. So I don't even use him. I use this one because I feel like he's just the better choice between the two. And they look almost identical to Zoha the Odatic Boundless and Frito probably the Odatic Boundless. I don't remember what his is. I'd have to pull him out of my book and I'm not going to do all that. Alright. So we'll get uh, Zoha out of the way. Next I run two Alarit. The Odiac Dark. Now, if you remember earlier, I mentioned about being able to pull back from your banish pile. He's your guy. So, what he does is you contribute one monster and special summon this card, and he has to be in your graveyard to do it. Most of the Odiac monsters, especially some from graveyard, are doing that. Or you can cheese them out with a couple other cards that I'll be explaining for the spell and trap cards I use for this deck. But, um,. Basically, like say you could go Zulha, throw him down. You already have Dark in the graveyard. Get rid of Zulha, pull Dark back. Now Dark has your opponent. It gives your opponent an option. Um, they get to do something, and then you get to do something. You get to do it regardless, and if they choose to take the option or not, because they'll get an option of adding a monster from their graveyard back to their hand, and you'll get an option of. Taking up to two cards, including at least one reptile from your banish pile, and pulling them back in the graveyard. And you're probably thinking, like, why is that important? Why is that a thing? Well, there's a couple of monsters who look at their self banished on purpose, and you're pulling back because it's like free special summons. It's like it's a real, it's a real good way. And I, I'll explain gameplay depending on how long I want to do this video. I'm actually really tired, and I just got off work. One of the Bust something out before I lay down. Alright, so two dark. Two Zuha. Now we're gonna go with one of the uh one of the centerpieces. We got two Omni um, I don't even know how to pronounce her name to be honest. She's Odiac Queen. She has a couple effects. She gets brought special one from the graveyard, getting rid of two of your monsters. So attributing two. That's a special summon, it's not a tribute summon. And if a monster special summoned from your opponent's graveyard, except during the damage step, you can send one card they control to the graveyard. If a monster is sent from your opponent's hand or deck to graveyard, except during the damage step, you can special a light or dark reptile monster from your graveyard. So that's pretty convenient, especially those uh, people who use, like, reinforcements of the army. Well, that's the hand. But if you're trying to intentionally use stuff to get rid of other stuff, I don't know, like, Foolish Burial, she, that proc or effect, any effect that involves just throwing stuff from the hand or from the deck to the graveyard, but monsters, so. It's surprisingly more convenient than you'd think. Like, it's been more useful than I thought. So, two queens out of the way, I would run three, but there's, there's just so many eight stars in this, and a lot of XYZ plays for eights. Alright, I've run one Odiac Keen Aran. And his effect is if this card is in your graveyard, you can tribute two special summon this card. If your opponent adds a card to their hand except during the damage except during the draw phase or damage steps or rota reinforcements on the army, this would work. You can send one random card from their hand to the graveyard. If a monster your opponent controls is sent to the graveyard, you can add a light or dark Odiac mo monster or Odiac reptile monster. Light Dark Reptile Monster, only specified. I just say Odiac because my whole deck is. This, this deck's Odiac. Like, the whole thing is other than Light Serpent and, like, one other card. But, um. Let you add it from the graveyard. From your deck or graveyard to your hand. So, he lets you add stuff from the graveyard or your deck to your hand based off your opponent. Based off what your opponent does. And then Queen lets you special summon Reptile Monsters from your graveyard based off of if she gets procked off. 
Alright, so I only run one king, because again, I run a lot of eight stars on this, and you, you could easily draw a bummy hand, but not really. Like, if you just draw one of a handful of cards, which is a lot of them, you, you can make a lot of plays with this. I like it, personally. I think that I could run this with, like, my Shadals, but I, I really don't want to separate my, my Shadals from my Chaos. Because I run a Chaos Shadal deck, too. I mean, I could try to do an Invoked with it, I don't know. It really depends when I get all the stuff and get more Alistairs and Invocation and Magical Meltdown and the good Alistair Fusions, not the real shitty ones that you just get out of, um... I think it's Genesis Impact. I don't know. Could be wrong. Alright, so we're going to get that out of the way. Alright, so, we're going to run Nunu the Odiatic Remnant. Now, if you remember earlier, I was talking about how, like, some of these reptiles will banish themselves. They'll get banished, and then you use Dark to pull them back. He's one of the guys. This is, like, the guy. He's got two effects. He's real simple. Um, if he's in your hand, you can send him to the graveyard. Send one Dark Reptile Monster from your deck to graveyard. So, Odiatic Dark. If you control no monsters, or or if you control an Odiac monster, you can special the, summon this guy from graveyard, but banish it when it leaves the field. So, he can come back once for free. And then when he leaves the field, it gets banished. And then the purpose of him is, use him to start climbing your way up. Use Odiac and Dark to, um, to bring him back from banish pile. Basically. So... A little fuck around find out. I run two of them right now. I would run three, but if you draw into a hand of three Ds, I mean, you could definitely play into it. It just, it just depends, but I've had very good luck with this. This, this deck has had high capabilities OTKing to where I either damn near kill someone or I do kill someone off of one play. Like, I go, they go first, I go second. I, I use Snake Rain, dump four monsters, use a... Uh, Use Neon, a couple other things. I, I'm probably going to have time to actually explain that, that setup. Because I feel like if I do, that'll make sense on why I like this deck so much. And I threw this together months ago, actually. So two Neons. Well, two Neons. Alright, we got Carice, the Odiac Light. Now, she's a four star. Well, eight star. Yeah. Eight star. Her effect is, um, she needs one monster to be tributed, especially on her from Grave, and then she has an effect, she offers your opponent, and then she gives you an effect, regardless if they take it or not. Um, your opponent is able to special on a monster from the graveyard, but then they negate its effects, and then if this card is special summon, meaning Odiac Light, you get to target one level four or lower Odiac monster in your graveyard and special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field. Again, use her effect to pull someone back. Banishes it when it goes, Odiac Dark pulls it back to grave. What I like to do is I'll use her effect after I've already put a Nia into the grave, and I'll go ahead and explain Nia since I'm talking about her. This is Nia. Nia, the Odiac Remnant. Nia is just like Nunu, very similar, but Nia's special effect is she can special summon. She can send this card from your hand in the graveyard, summon Light Reptile Monster. She does the same thing as Nunu, but when she's normal or special, you can add Odiac Spell or Trap card from your deck to your hand. So basically, what I like to do is, um, if I draw the right shit, or if I draw Snake Rain, really. Snake Rain is like the, the floodgate for this archetype. Very easy, very simple. Snake Rain. You can usually win off that, unless your opponent has a drastic response, but... Anyways, so, Odiac Light, use Nia, right? So say if you have Nunu, and then you, you already have Nia in Graveyard because you've used her or something, right? You special summon Nunu from Grave, right? Use Odiac Light's effect from Graveyard, get rid of Nunu, Nunu gets banished. Odiac Light's effect go off, grab Nia, slap Nia back down the field, get another free search. And then, typically what I would do from there is I would uh, get rid of Nia. I would already have Dark in Graveyard, and then I have Odiac Light and Odiac Dark. And then, whenever Dark comes out, I would uh, pull my two Banish cards back down to my Graveyard, and then I would do an XYZ for an 8. Typically. Now, there's two monsters left in this deck I haven't showed you yet. I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. It's my two boss monsters. Now, we're going to start with the first one. 
Odiac or Odie Abyss, the Odiac Overlord. This is the boss monster for the whole archetype. This is the Overlord. He is a ten star. He is not to be fucked with. He requires three tribute, mon three monsters tributed all in the field, especially on him from graveyard. But you can cheese him out a bunch of different ways. And then once while this card's face on the field, you can, quick effect. You can send all monsters from the field to the graveyard except face up monsters, especially someone from the graveyard. So basically, all your monsters have this whole deck set. Cycles from grave, back to field. You'll be good. It won't affect you none. But your opponent, I doubt their deck does that most of the time. I mean. It's a pretty, uh, pretty common misconception, I guess, but he is my, he's the main guy, I only got one of him, I actually got real lucky and put a lot of effort, and then when I went looking, I had found six packs left of Ancient Guardian, and then I demanded for the goddamn Yu-Gi-Oh gods to give me Overlord, and then I actually pulled Overlord and Queen. In the same packs. The last packs at that shop, too. The day I went. And it was awesome. Yeah. Alright, my last reptile monster, who's not an Odette monster, is my Evil Dragon Anta. Evil Dragon Anta is your typical 8. You must be special summoned by banishing all reptile monsters you control and in your graveyard. His attack and defense becomes the number of the banished times 600. You're probably thinking, like, oh, that's not a big deal. But he's also got to fight once a turn during the end phase. He targets one card on the field and destroys it. So you can either set him on the field and then protect him a little bit very, very early in just to get that fucking target and destroy. Or you say you're all out of cards, like you're all out of moves. This is your only move left, and you just need to beef him up high enough to swing over their dude or swing over and kill him. Chances are you're going to be able to if they have no type of response or can't negate its effect because I've I'm, I'm done it and got him up to six seven thousand before and just dumped him like dumped him at the end of the door right before I was going to lose and then won because of it. All right, anyways, so that is a uh, evil dragon anta. It's weird though. It's, his name is evil dragon anta, but he's a snake and he's a reptile. But dragons in his name makes no sense. Oh, so we're gonna go on to our, we're gonna go on to the trap cards. So the trap cards for this is you're gonna run two Odiac Calling. Odiac Calling gives you two choices. You can special summon two Odiac tokens for the reptile, the dark. If you have eight or more Odiac monsters with different names in your graveyard, you can special summon two reptile monsters with different names from your graveyard, which most of the time I usually don't get to use that because if I'm using the tokens I'm using it early in. And you can search these out off Nia's effect and use the tokens for like that or use it to pull shit from the graveyard or use it with Hollow, which by the way, since I'm talking about it, I'm gonna go ahead and put that down too. Now Hollow is interesting. I haven't seen a lot of cards like this. During the main page you can treat one reptile effect monster and target one monster your in your opponent's grave or a special summon it so you can steal it temporarily but send it to the grave during the end phase. You can only use it once per turn if this phase card is sent, to, sent from the spell and trap card zone to the grave or it's an all phase of number of time monsters you can show the graveyard. Well, lucky for me, my whole deck's reptile. All of it. None of it's not. None of the main deck is not reptile. And since we're on that topic, I'm going to go ahead and Mention Offering to the Snake Deity. This is a pretty cool card. Reminds me of like, um... Ah, uh, what is it? So It's one of my Emancipator cards. It's a... Uh, Emancipator something. It's where you sack one of them and you can destroy two other things. It's the same deal. Target one face up reptile monster you control. And two cards and your printed controls destroy all three. So it's a nice good little suicide pack to use that with one of your Odiac tokens or use it on your Nia or your Nia Nia or your Zuhab. Zuhab especially because you all have Zuhab blow up two cards in their back row for example or a monster in a back row card. That's what I like to do. And then you set off Zuhab's effect as well. And then that right after Zuhab goes to the grave you can use both of his effects. The one where he leaves the field on um, the second one where he's in the graveyard and he can pull himself back to the hand if you send a card to the graveyard in his place. Pretty nice. So, those are the uh, Odiac trap cards, anyways. 
Now when I say ODX trap cards, I'm talking about like ODX specific. And it's not all the trap cards. I still run your your typical trap cards. I'm not a rich man like all these these other people I see who say like, oh you need the best deck, you need to you need three forbidden droplets, you need to dump three hundred dollars on him, blah blah blah. No you don't. You'd be surprised what you get off some trades, so I'm not about to pay a hundred bucks for a single card, but I'll definitely sell one for a hundred dollars. Already done that. Uh, my, my standard floater traps I use is uh, Trenno. If you're not new to the game, you know what it does. Field Newton. Two solemn mornings for that extra. Just to be annoying. Magic Cylinders, which is old, but it targets, which is kind of kind of rough. I need to run like your OG Mirror Force, stuff like that, but uh, I'm lazy. Bottomless Trap Hole for a Banish, but it also targets. It's not it's older card. Compulse targets, but it's useful. And then a Drowning Mirror Force. Bouncing back into the deck's pretty nice. It, it's a good disruption. Very, very good disruption. I swear if I keep smacking my tripod, I'm one, I'm not going to know her. I'm going to go back and look at this video later, and it's just going to be a bunch of shaking the whole time. Alright, whatever. Your, um, your ODX spells are real simple. There's only two of them that come with the whole archetype. You have ODX Water Lily, which this is awesome. Typically... Snake Rain, and after Snake Rain, if you have that, you're, you're ensuring you're going to get at least three monsters. If you play it outright, you're going to get three monsters from your graveyard to the field. And if you grab the right things, and then it's like turn two, and you use Overlord's Effect, and then bounce their shit real quick, and I don't know, Harpies are back row if they even have one, you win. 100%. Because you can just grab, if you do it right, you'll be able to grab Overlord. Queen, and then Odiac Light, probably, and then Odiac Light's effect. Stack, 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 and then you'd XYZ out twice. You'd be able to one turn someone. Done it. It's hilarious. They get so upset. Anyway, so two Odiac Water Lilies. I forgot that, I totally forgot to explain what it does. You send one Reptile Monster from your deck to the graveyard. If you have five or more Reptile Monsters of different names in your graveyard, you can special summon one Reptile Monster from your graveyard. So, again, you can use that and cheese out Overlord. That's what I do. One of the ways. So, I also run two Odiac Origins. This is their Field Zone card. It's pretty generic. Face of Red to Monster, your control is destroyed by battle, or an opponent's card effect. You can target one card in your opponent's control. It's essentially a great card. This card on the field. Field Zone is destroyed by opponent's card effect. You can send cards from the top of your deck. Top of your opponent's deck to the graveyard equal to the number of reptiles with different names and generous. So you can force a mill, potentially. But most of the time, when this gets hit, usually someone's hitting it pretty early, which is the, probably the best time to do it. Since it's based on the amount of reptiles in your graveyard. Alright. Well, I still have my spells to show you that I run. And then the extra deck. So, I run a lightning storm. Your field clearing. Obviously, if you never used it, you discard a card and you just draw face up monsters on your opponent's out of field. I run a monster reborn because it's monster reborn and getting a free special summon from either person's graveyard is always nice. I run one, trade in. Trade in's good. This deck runs a lot of eights. Trade in, send an eight, turn your hand in the graveyard. The more stuff in your, more monsters in your graveyard for this archetype, the better. Like, it's just, it, it runs off that. You need that to happen. Trade in, discard an 8-star monster in the grave, draw two cards. Beneficial. It's no way it's a loss. It never is. It's always profit. Alright, so, Venom's Old Viper's Rebirth. This is another way to cheese Overlord out. If all monsters in your grave are a reptile, target one non-tuner in your grave, I suppose some but destroy it in the end phase. So, you could, like... Use it the cheese out of a lord real quick on your turn, just to dump his effect on your opponent. And then he'll go, and then you can just pull him back again with either, like, doing it naturally with his effect, or, um... Monster Born, etc., etc. There's a couple, couple ways to do it. Um, one Foolish Burial. We'll run three, but it's, it's restricted to one right now. Use that, start her off. 
throw something in the graveyard right at the very beginning, or if you need that one more reptile and you just happen to top deck this before you top deck Odiac War Lily, then you're good to go. Alright, and here is the money shot. Three snake rains. Snake rain is simple. Discard a card, send four reptile monsters from your deck to the graveyard. It is not once per turn, which is awesome. And it is the single. This is it's the uh, it's the start. It's the open to the floodgate. You do that. You do it all properly. You're gonna you're gonna guarantee to cause some issues. And then one pot of duality because pot of duality is always nice. Getting your choices early. I would say card advance, but card advance doesn't can give you a card and just let you look. And getting a card is better than looking at a card, in my opinion. Let me, uh, clear this out of the way. I'll share with you guys my extra deck right now. It's not done. Like, uh, I've been slowly adding, trying to get more XYZ monsters for it. But... Extra deck wise, King of the Feral Imps, very simple. Two four stars. I use Nunu and Nia to get him out, or I will use either of them and then Zoha. Detach one, add a reptile monster from your deck to hand. It's very simple 2300, 2000 fence. But you use on the, like, add fire to the gas. I don't know, that sounded really corny now that I'm thinking about it. Oh well, oh well. But, very useful. And then, I run a couple of links. I need to add more to it. I run your typical, well, when I say typical, I guess it depends. I run a Nightmare Griffin just for its effect. And pretty easy to get out, even though it's a link for. Um, in fact, let you grab a set spell or trap card. Your graveyard and pull it back and sat down. Now I'm a unicorn to send something back to the deck. Decode talker just because he has a fl he has that uh, quick effect as long as he has stuff, as long as he has material and he gains attack on his own. Not bad. I would usually run like Nightmare Griffin too, and then an Underworld Goddess and all the other stuff. But most of the time, about 90% of the time, I don't even pull for my extra deck for this deck. I usually run them down and then kill them very fast with. Overlord and Queen and then usually King. But let me let me show you the centerpiece of the extra deck. Don't worry, it's not Crooked Cook. He's just another four star that's a floater. More or less. He's okay. Rarely use him. I think I've only pulled him like once. Now the uh, centerpiece for this is if you remember correctly, I um I said that this deck uses XYZs and it uses eight stars. XYZs. Well, Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon. That is at the centerpiece, little little meat for the deck. And then, if you know what he does, I can beef him up five, detach, and then I run Cypher Dragon with him as well. Well, I've about ran out of time. I will, um, I'll make another video about some deck plays you can do with this, but, uh, catch you around.